Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. <clears throat> Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach, and definitely mindful coach. And welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today, we have a special guest because it's about Life's a Shuffle and shuffling different people and guests in really helps everybody out there. We have a wonderful guest and she was part of IPEC where Gloria and I took our life coaching school. We met and I actually had to, I coached her as part of the program myself and it was wonderful. I learned a lot of stuff from her and she learned something from me. The wonderful Jody Hellerman, welcome to Life's a Shuffle. Ron, thanks, Gloria. I'm excited to be with you guys. Yeah, so kind of, you know, we know a little bit, but kind of tell our, our guests about yourself, uh, where you're from, kind of open it up. Okay, I will. Well, first of all, I got to tell you, I love the name Life's a Shuffle because that's kind of my mantra. I feel like that has been <laughs> my life as it is with most people. And it actually has kind of directed me in my own coaching practice, um, dealing with the types of things that people go through in life. So I actually was born and raised in Iowa. And I, at the age of 21, my senior year in college, decided I didn't want to be in Iowa anymore. So I took off and I moved to California. And I had some family out here that I stayed with. I went to work for their family business, thought I would go back and finish my last semester of college. And you know what? I met my husband the day I moved to California. Um, didn't know he was going to be my husband, but uh, we ended up getting married two years later and I never left. And I have uh, kind of, I guess I got lucky in one way in that I got into a career that I really, really loved without my college degree. And I worked my way up in business to a VP position. And I got to tell you, the one thing that always nagged me was that I hadn't finished my college degree. So I got to a point uh, in my career about 20 years in, I decided it was time to go back. I had a few family things happen, um, happened to lose both of my parents within a two year period of time. And boy, that makes you look inside, you know, and think about what is important. So I stopped working. I went back to school, got my master's degree, finished, finished my undergrad, got my master's at the same time. And I did all this while I was raising three kids. I had um, three daughters in three and a half years, and it was a perfect time for me to be home with them. So I took that time while I was going to school to just be the volunteer mom, take my kids to and from their sports, get involved with school um, clubs and that kind of thing. And then, of course, they grow up and they start going off to college. And, you know, you find yourself in a kind of position like, OK, I've been this stay at home mom now. So I go from a corporate executive to a stay at home mom and had to find something to do. So I started just kind of dabbling back in work, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I have to say, nothing really hit. There was nothing that I felt passionate about. And probably seven or eight years later, I finally decided one day, it's time to find what you love doing. Life is short. And I was used to, you know, kind of jumping around, but I just wanted to find what was home for me in a career. And so I I don't know how I even stumbled upon life coaching, but it just really struck me in the heart and sounded like something that I wanted to do. So I went back to school and got my um, coaching certification and working on my accreditation right now. And, um, you know, in the meantime, I've had many, many things happening. And I will say that have, be, having the coach perspective has enabled me to deal with a lot of these shuffles much better than I would have had I not had the support of people like you, you know, my classmates, other coaches that are in my life. Um, so I, it's been an interesting ride. You know, I, I people are always surprised when I say, oh, yeah, I moved from Iowa. Um, but it was, you know, it was that first step of like pushing myself out there. And it, it changed my life. And I think if I'd had the fear, I would never have done that. And who knows where I would be now? But yeah, so I, I guess that's kind of my, my life story in a, in a little blip there. Um, I became a grandmother, which I hate to even say that word. I don't feel old <laughs> enough. But um, yeah, I just became a grandmother. I have another daughter getting ready to have a baby. And uh, even those things are you know, it's, that's a transition. I mean, it's something that you all of a sudden, it's like, okay, now who am I, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like, you know, that's, that's kind of, I think what led me to coaching is um, 
just having all these different things that all of a sudden are thrown at you. And it's just different from the norm. You know, then we've had this year with the pandemic and it's like, how do you deal with that? You know, it makes people, I think, look at things differently. And I think people are making life changes during this pandemic that had would not have been prompted without that. So um, anyway, it's not a good thing. Pandemic's definitely not a good thing, but I do think that some positive things can come from that and definitely have for me. So. Wow. Congratulations, Jody, for being a grandma. You're, you're going to be the one that's going to be spoiling the grandchildren. That's for sure. I could see that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can see that too. <laughs> you, you, you'd be the babysitter almost every weekend, right? Where the parents go out. Yeah. And I'll, I'll ask to do that, which I never thought I would do. But um, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, it really is. And I had three daughters. So I've got a grandson now, and my other daughter's going to have a boy. So. I'm getting, uh, it's a whole new experience. <laughs> is it, um, is it a different experience and different feeling, um, nurturing and taking care of your kids rather than you with, um, you know, your grandchildren? Is there a different feeling? Oh gosh. Yeah. And you know, everybody says that. I remember, you know, I have friends that have had grandkids for a while and, I remember them saying, oh, you just won't believe how different it is. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I mean, of course, I'm going to love them to death, but it's hard to imagine loving something more than your own children. And I certainly don't. But boy, it is a different attachment. You know, there's something because you see your own child in that person. Mm -hmm. And I just feel, I don't know, you're, you look at it so differently. You look at it from outside and there's nothing better than having a baby dropped off. He's happy and smiley. And, you know, the second he goes kind of crazy mom's back to pick him up. So you don't have to, you just don't have the stress of it. So I think you're just a little bit more relaxed and um, can see things clearer, you know? So yeah, it is very different. Very, very different. So that's kind of the joy that you've gotten out of this pandemic is that you spend time with your grandson. And when you see him or her, this is, gives you a lot of joy and smiling faces and all that, all that good stuff. Yeah, it definitely does. It's like the one bright spot you know, we've laughed like 2020, like it's just kind of a year you write off in the, the book, you know, because what it, yeah. what's happened this year that's been worthwhile. And I keep saying like, this is the one great, great thing. Like it kind of outweighs all the nasty stuff that's happened in 2020, you know, yeah. having this little guy come around and, and just seeing his new life and just kind of watching it through his eyes, you know, every single day, just seeing how he's just open to new things and you know, the world is just amazing to him, you know, and we can take yeah. little things for granted. So it's kind of cool to watch it through a kid's eyes. Well, it's, it's, it's been a shitty year, but aside yeah. from it being a shitty year, you've yeah. had a wonderful blessing that came your way. Um, and, you know, I, I've, I've called the kids, little kids, little ones, infants like that. They're like, like a stress reliever they bring a different joy in your life. And, uh, I've, I've heard that from, from a lot, you know, um, even with my mom, you know, the kids are like, their little ones are like their stress reliever, like a toy. Yeah. You know what I notice is when he's here, I rarely sit down. I mean, unless I'm really working, you know, I'll be sitting at a desk and I get very focused, but I just don't sit down to just watch TV or to do nothing. And when he's here, I have to be on with him and it pulls me away from all that stress. It pulls me away from what I'm thinking about for tomorrow and the next day. I just have to be in the moment. So that's a really great gift when he's here is it puts me in the moment with him and I don't have the time to think about anything else. So it's kind of a nice distraction from all the chaos. And even though he can be a handful, you know, he's a, he's four months old, so um, that's not without work. It's definitely sometimes kind of work and it can be a little stressful, but it's a totally different kind that is actually more of a release. Yeah. You know, when I heard earlier, you're talking about, um, how you, your grandson brings a lot of joy to your life and it allows you to be present, right? Cause you have to be, I mean, he's, he's a kid, right? He's all over the place yeah. pretty, pretty much. Right. How, how, if you think about that, for a second, how could you put that in the rest of your life? Well, you know, it's funny you asked that wrong because I actually have been so much more aware of that because I, I think, 
you know, you, I don't know if it's my age or what, but having kids that are, you know, in their late twenties, early thirties, uh, I see the difference between from when they were young like my grandson's age, all through childhood, they didn't have the distractions of cell phones and social media and all of those kinds of things. And I think I've gotten caught into all that stuff just because of the age of my kids. And I have to say, it really bothers me because I feel, I find that when you're with other people, it's so rare that those people are totally in tune to each other and they're not on a phone or they're not checking their texts or they're, you know, not looking at YouTube or Facebook And it has made me realize, like having that one-on-one time with him makes me realize, like, I want that with other people. You know, I want to be able to sit down at a table with somebody and have a conversation without a phone ringing or without, you know, something else coming up to distract the person. So I have found myself trying to just be more present all over the place. So when I even go to my kids' houses, I've kind of started teasing them. It's like, if they've got the phone, I'm like, can you put the phone down? You know, cause I just want to be able to have that time one-on-one and to both be present for that moment. Cause those moments flee, you know, they're, they're gone. And um, you just want to get the most out of each one of those. So that's that in having the little guy, Jack, his name is um, it's really just, it's kind of just changed my whole perspective and, and how I deal with people. How, how does that change you? Oh, I think it just makes me more, um, makes me more calm, um, makes me a little more resilient because God knows this year has, like you said, it has been a shitty year. And I will share with you (laughs) that a week before my grandson arrived, um, I had two dogs that were my, they were like my children. I've had them for 11, 12 years. I may have talked about them to either of you guys. I don't know. I remember them. They were, I remember. They were mm-hmm. my life. I mean, literally, they were under my feet. They just were my companions. And I lost both of them in two days. Oh, um, my goodness. Oh, no. Completely um, unexpected. The first one, we had to make the decision. And little did we know the other one had a problem. And I took her into the vet a couple of days later, thinking she was just um, grieving from the other guy being gone. And found out she had a very large tumor. And the doctor basically said, you need to put her down. So I lost two of them in two days. I had the baby a week later. And thank God, because, you know, it helped me to get through that. Um, yeah. It definitely did. And and even just going through that with him, I wanted to be focused and I wanted to be there for my kids. And I, I guess in some ways... <clears throat> I was kind of throwing myself into other things so I didn't have to think about it. I, the grieving definitely came later. But just in having this small child and realizing the impact that everything and everybody around him has on his development and who he becomes has just made me, I don't know, I just value every relationship in a, in a much deeper way. And I think it's helped me to just kind of sit back, relax a little bit, not take things quite so serious. It just has made me calmer in a way. No, listen to to your story right now. It's it's really kind of how uh, we had a podcast with Ray Carmen, and it's um, in life she called it the awakening moments. Right, you go through certain things in life that wakes you up, like when your parents passed away, it woke you up to do something else, and. Uh, unfortunately, your dogs passed away simultaneously, unbeknownst to you. Because I remember one dog had I was already kind of having some issues. I remember uh, last year when we were, we were going through IPEC, and he took me to vet a couple of times. Um, it's funny now after your dogs passed away, your grandson is here, Jack is here. Now you say, wait a minute here, connection and communication and looking in someone's eyes because most of the communication is nonverbal. Right. So what I'm saying and my body language are two different things. It, that now has become a pillar of value for you. And that's almost, we had, so you had another awakening moment just right there. Unfortunately, you lost your, your two lovely pets, but now you realize, wait a minute here, while I'm here, I'm going to take these relationships and these things that are vital for me and make sure I hone those 100%. So when you go to your daughter's house, Hey, what are you doing? You're on Instagram, put that phone down. You're on Facebook, put that phone down. This is our time. And now you're able to take things that are important to you and actually say, no, wait, these are important. Let's do it now. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny because 
I mean, I look back now too, and of course you have retrospect. Um, I look back at the dogs and it's like, I truly love them like my family and you know, they're dogs and I'm a real pet person. So when I say that, I don't say that lightly, but they are dogs, right? They're pets. They're not human beings. And I had such connection with them because I spent so much time with them. And I will say, I kind of allowed myself to not so much be with people because when I, I, we go out and I'd be like, oh, the dogs are home alone. I wanted to rush home. I, it was something that kind of was always on my mind and it truly was a bit of a distraction for me. So what I learned is that if I do it again, I want a little bit healthier relationship, <laughs> even with my pets, because mm -hmm. they are pets and they come and they go and I'll never forget them and I'll always love them. But I don't ever want to get that attached because the pain was beyond something I ever expected. And the reality is I got this little grandson and you know what? He's going to be around you know, God willing, the rest of my life. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the kind of, and that relationship, you know, pets give back, but what I can see in his development are the things that I can, I can help put out there for him, you know, and trying to help make the world a better place for him. Um, those are the things that matter. So yeah, it really, um, it just gives you a whole new perspective, you know? Yeah. You know, growing up, I had how many? Um, I had two two dogs total when I was younger, and um, from what I've learned on that, um, I, I was told that, and it was a reminder to just remember they're just something borrowed. Uh -huh. It'll be this being lent to me for a reason, and that something that might have had happened to you that having them had changed it in some way and then losing them again had changed it in a, in a, in a different way to where there was a lesson learned on me. either way. There was some lesson learned there. And then now, you know, how you look at things in life in a different perspective now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is, it's in those, those things seem, I don't, they aren't trivial. They don't seem trivial, but when you look at the big scheme of life, they're the smaller things, you know, they really mm -hmm. are. And, it does. It, it, it helps you in, in this year of just, you know, craziness. I kept thinking like, what else can happen this year? You know, it's just been one thing after another, after another. But if I step back and I look at every sing, single thing that happened, I'm kind of at that point in my life where I can take what was the learning in that? Like, what did I get from that? I had these incredible pets that I loved to death. They gave me unconditional love. You know what, though? They're gone now and I have to move on. And I did learn things from having them and going through that. So I have to go to the next step. And, you know, now it's being the grandmother and trying to be the grandma that's there and, um, you know, is giving to yeah. that child and to my kids, you know, helping them get through a difficult. I, I remember what it's like to raise babies. And boy, people work a lot harder now, I think, than you know th what they did when I was that age. And they need all the help they can get. So I'm very happy to kind of transition into that role. Um, and fortunately, have a career now that allows me to, you know, pick where I, pick and choose where I spend my time. You know, Gloria just hit, uh, I read this, this, I read this book every day called The Daily Stoic. So pretty much is like Ryan Holiday, and I've got the co-author, but him and somebody else. And what it is, it's pretty much a daily text, you know, where it talks about things in life. Um, and I read something, not today, but yesterday. And it's usually like a small paragraph, maybe 10 sentences or less, but very, very nice, but it awakens a different part of you. So yeah, what I read yesterday was, um, we own nothing in life. And mm -hmm. that was the title. And really, what he really went into in this chapter was, if you really think about it, you really own nothing. If you think about your mortgage, you don't own the house. You basically got to pay the bank until you really own it. You really don't own your clothes in your back because you have to pay to get them. Right? You really don't own your car because you have to pay for insurance. You got to pay for repairs. And you got to pay for all this other stuff. Right? We could be, if the car doesn't work well, you get rid of it. Right? But what we do own is our connections, our happiness, our joy. Because that comes from inside. Yeah, and, you're absolutely right. And that's the that's huge part that we really got to own is we own those. Because 
not just borrowed time, but our life is borrowed as well, too. We're not going to be around forever. I mean, it just the reality is some people may live to be 100 or may live to be 80 or who knows. But we're on borrowed time as well. So why waste time thinking about things we don't own? When we can really just build and establish better connections with people, learn while we grow, right? Because the idea you said earlier was the learning. So learn as we grow so that we can become a better individual for not just my, ourselves, but people around, around us. And, and that's trivial for life. I I'm think I was thinking about um we did a podcast um one of them was called the podcast one of the podcasts we did was love language right and what I'm seeing here what I'm hearing is Jody I I can totally relate from you and correct me if I'm wrong but what I see is you value time <laughs> and quality time with the people that you love and the people that matters the most to you and you know, I can relate because that's how I truly am. And that's part of, that's my love language. And that's how I show love is time, quality time. Not so much on material things, giving gifts, but it's just giving you my time and showing you that, you know, this is how I care and how, how much I care about you because I value my time with you. And I see and that's how you, that's what's happening here is that you value your time with your loved ones. Yeah. And that is, it, that's so funny you say that, Gloria, because I've, I've always felt like that. And I'm, I would say I'm more introverted than extroverted. So when I am with people, I prefer a smaller group of people because mm -hmm. for me, that's how you connect. When you're with a giant group, it's hard to have real deep one-on-one -on -one conversations or really have any one-on-one -on -one connection in the midst of a large group. So I've always really enjoyed that, just being able to have, and not that you can't, because you absolutely can. There's ways to do it, but mm -hmm. I do value so much just having that, um, you know, even when my kids are here, being able to just take one of them out and we go to lunch and be able to sit and talk for an hour just about them. You know, that brings me so much more joy than trying to sit in the house full of 10 of us and trying, you know, trying to have a, a deep conversation with anybody. So it's um, just, yeah, it's just yeah, more intimate, right. right? Yeah. Yeah. So Ron, you said something that I, and this is, I don't mean to tell a sad story, but I just, I want to tell this because I think there was something beautiful that came from it. So I have a very, very good friend whose daughter um, is, I think Allie's like 34 years old and she has four children. She had a two-year-old that a year ago was diagnosed with a very rare form of brain cancer. So you think about eight. Oh, wow. Old, okay. It's her youngest child. So she has three kids school age trying to juggle taking care of this baby in the midst of a pandemic with kids trying to homeschool. And her family just jumped in and helped her. And what I, I guess where I'm going with this is that this is a family that has just incredibly deep faith. And I mean, they're, they're very, very devout Catholics. And I remember talking to Allie right after her baby was diagnosed. And she looked at me and she said, you know, she goes, I've had to really think about this. And she goes, and I'm not saying this is going to be an easy thing. She goes, but I realize that there's no guarantees in life. And she goes, I was given this beautiful child. And if God wants her back, then I need to give her back you know, and she'll yeah. always be a part of me. And I was blown away at her ability to accept that. You know, I think so many of us fight it. And, you know, not that if, if she didn't have the kind of faith she has, she would never, I don't think, been able to feel this way. But I watched over the past year how they jumped in. And I mean, they did everything they could, um, every kind of treatment. And they got to a point where she actually had some miracles happen throughout the year where they thought she was going to conquer this. And unfortunately she passed away two days before Thanksgiving, <gasps> which was her two year old birthday. And watching how this family has dealt with that has been amazing. And it has taught me so, so much uh, again about the value of life and how we don't know how much of that we have, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. God, you hope you have a long one and a good one. But here was a child that was here less than two years. And I can't even tell you the impact that that baby had on everybody within this community. And, you know, not, and so I'm not going to say something good came out of it. It's a horrible, horrible thing to happen. But the way it brought people together 
and the way it made people look at life a little differently and value the people around them and love the people around them. Um, sadly, we need those reminders once in a while. Right. But it just, it just, you know, when you said that, like, we don't know what we've got in life. There's no guarantees. And so it's up to us to choose to make the very best of even the worst situation. Mm-hmm. It so, certainly is. Yeah. And you said, sadly, sometimes we do need reminders. And not only that, that we need reminders, sometimes, I, I guess it also depends on your beliefs, right? So I know wow. I've, I, I'm Catholic also, and I've, I have learned that, you know, like what Ron was saying is everything in life is not permanent. We're on, we're here, not permanently either. We're here temporarily. And sometimes it takes, it takes for someone that you really matter, that matters a lot to you to go until you realize and you wake up. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you think like, okay, what's the point? This little two-year-old didn't even have a life, but I have to tell you from a doctor's perspective, I have a friend who works in a child's cancer clinic and she told me, she goes, Jody, children that age don't know different. So they don't have a life to reflect on, to know what they're missing out on. And that little girl had the most loved last year. I mean, the way her family, her siblings, everybody, she was a happy little kid, you know? And so was her life a waste? No, because she impacted so many people. And she's, she's and become that angel absolutely. that's going to be watching over everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So horrible story. I didn't mean to share that as a downer. I actually no, think it's a no. beautiful testament to just what, um, I guess, attitude, faith for the, uh, yeah, I'm Catholic as well. So it was easy for me to relate to that, that level of faith they had, but I think for a lot of people, they don't. And so that's kind of hard to even understand how a mother could say, if God wants my child, you know, yeah. but it is, I think it's a testament to how we all have that choice and how we look at something and, you know, can take something that is horrendous and try to find something in it that's positive and good. You know what? Um, I read a lot of books. Actually, one of the authors that I've been reading for last year is called David R. Hawkins. And in several books, he talks about um, all of us, no matter what age you are, still has the inner child. And what I mean by that is that because of certain experiences in our lives from when we were a child to now have coined our bare less to put it better, has become our belief system. And certain things come up, that certain situations that as you were a child, it could be that, you know, I don't have enough friends. And as I was a child, you would have more friends, you know. It's a great awareness, the fact that she was two years old, or was it, would it hit her two-year birthday, that her awareness is much better than ours. And oh. what I mean by that is that she doesn't have all this friction, right, in your mind good, bad, right or wrong, or I should do this, I shouldn't do that. Or because if, if you take the same person right now, they'll say, you know what? I only got a year to live. I'm going to do whatever I want. While a child, unaware this may be their end or unaware that there's so much out there, was able to live life at a level seven, as we learned in IPEC or in energy yes. leadership, because they're unaware what else is out there. But I'm I'm blissful in what I have in this moment, which is right now. Versus if it was me, you know, I'm going to go uh, blow my money away. I'm going to jump on an airplane. I'm going to climb Mount Everest. I'm you know, going all out. But being a child, as a child's mind, she's not aware of all those things. So she can embrace that joy and love and that she gave you guys energetically to the end because she wasn't aware of anything else. That's almost that is, that's huge. It's huge. And it's truly like you talk about being in the moment. And I think about her parents, like every single moment they were with her. They were 150% with her, you know, so the time she had with them, who knows, may have been greater than what their kids, the older kids are going to say they had as children, because as mm -hmm. you get older, you do lose sight of just the simplicity of life and the simplicity of just having people around you that love you. And yeah, this little girl would be in the hospital for weeks at a time. And every picture I saw of her, she had a big smile on her face and the nurses were playing with her and you know, they had music and she'd sit in her little bed and dance. It's like there was not a care in the world for her, you know? Um, so, I, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty amazing how those kind of things can, can Has affect that, you. Um, so watching your friend go through that with with her, 
for a child and um, and the way things had turned out. Has that, again, um, changed you in some way and had looked at other things or life in, in another perspective? Oh, 100%. And I've looked at them and I look at their strength and I envy it. And I just hope that if I ever have to go through anything, I, I'll tell you, it made me look at the death of my dogs differently. Yeah, that, you know, because I really will say I've kind of wallowed in grief off and on over the last several months with that. And boy, that put, that got put in perspective quickly for me. And I just, um, you know, I realized again, and we talked about this a lot in IPEC, it's our choice. We have the choice to react, to think, to behave however we choose. And, you know, I look at these guys and how they have acted throughout this entire experience. And God, I pray that I can like act this way if I ever have to deal. I want to be able to set that example that, you know what, it's my choice how I do this. Mm -hmm. And I can spend the next six months of my life walking around crying and complaining, why me, why her, or you can just take it and, and see it through and have the best attitude, absolutely hope and pray. But in the end, it's really not your choice. I, when I say that, I mean, it, it's going to end the way it's going to end. You only can choose how you act during that time. Mm -hmm. So I've got a whole new perspective around that. That's wow. That's great. It's like a new learning has uh, actually opened up for you. New, new, new flowers blossomed that you didn't know actually existed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So and really, side, don't yeah. you feel, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, I feel like an iPad, that's the one thing we, we talked about so much is like, it is, it's how you look at something and you and I could look at the same situation and see something completely different and behave completely different. And, you know, and that's our, that's our choice. That's how we're able to do it. But again, it comes down to what, how you want to behave and how you choose to behave or act or react. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to say was aside from this year being, you know, <laughs> a shitty year, it, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's done something wonderful for you. Add, you know, a different perspective, um, you know, that great awareness that had opened up for you as well. And just seeing life more like differently now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Kevin, I, you've probably talked to other people going through this pandemic where it's brought families together, you know, because that's really all you can see. I mean, there's been a lot of times when you couldn't see anybody but the people you lived with, you know, and um, having children at home, as much as I hate that they're having to go to school online, there's a gift for a parent that might be at home and being able to see their kids learn, you know? So um, yeah, I think even in the pandemic, there are some beautiful things that have come out of it. And in every situation in life, if you choose to find the, the beauty and the good, it'll be there. So again, it's, it's, we come down to, it's your choice, how you choose to, to feel and how you choose to look at things. Yeah. And don't you find when you look at something in a positive way, like I was thinking about this gal and looking at the death of her child, the way she looked at it. And you could be another person that would be the, why me? Why would God do this to me? And what does that do for you in the end? It doesn't bring you, it, it doesn't bring you the peace that you'll ultimately get looking at it the other way. Mm -hmm. No, it does not. And, and that's, you know, you can take two, that's why it's really great in, in this whole universe. We're all connected because we all can share our unique, unique journeys. And that's why we have Lights to Shuffle, to share a unique perspective of something. So as I hear you evolving right now, if you don't mind, can we explore what about your life kind of woke you up outside? You know, we talked about your dog passing. We talked about, you know, the birth of your grandson and your friend child passing away. Is there any one event that can really describe your life? I wouldn't say it's one event. Um, you know, I kind of described kind of the path that I took in, you know, picking up and moving away and going back to school and stopping a career. Like, I feel like my whole life has led up to the point where I'm at right now, where I have the ability to look at things so differently, you know, and it's, um, I, I, instead of like thinking about life being complete transition, which I think it is, I try to think about it as being transformative. <laughs> so, 
um, everything that I've gone through, especially this year, I feel like it's been completely transformative for me. You know, where I started at the beginning of the year and then having to experience each one of these little things throughout the year. I'm surprised. I feel like I've, well, I have my frustrations around everything with pandemic. I absolutely do. I'm not going to sit here and act like it doesn't bother me. Um, but I am able to cope with it much better. And I think it's because everything that's happened, I've, of all things, I think I've transformed myself into somebody that can not immediately look at the bad, try to find the positive first. And I think that's just um, kind of made me who I am. So you're embracing everything that's happened so far, embracing the life, embracing the joy, embracing everything that you, you've been always, you know, I, I guess you, would you say that, that you, do you think you have found your purpose yet? Oh, do we ever find our purpose? I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I feel like right now my purpose is to just try to make things, make the world a better place. I feel like everything is just so out of control it, I think a lot of people are feeling that loss of control around anything. And when we lose control of even being able to say, I'm going to go to a movie or I'm going to go grocery shopping, um, you feel like you've lost control, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I feel like I've kind of, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm answering your question there, but um, it's just, it's just been such a different year. Well, the question was not really meant um, for me, it's meant for you. Because you just said right now, I asked, have you ever found, do you know what your purpose is? You said, well, I, I don't know. Do we really find our purpose? Then you talked about things actually made you happy. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think in searching, like, and it's, I guess, because this year to me has been so challenging. I will say I have had moment to moment, like, what's my purpose? I have no idea. And I think that's just life. We all go through that. Anybody mm -hmm. that's got their purpose figured out day to day, um, lucky them. I mean, I just think it's, and I don't think life is meant for you to find your one purpose. Cause I don't think anybody has one purpose. So, you know, I'd love to say I got it all figured out. All I know from day to day and especially what this year's done to me is make me realize that my purpose is right now to do everything I can to just make this world a better place, to be a great role model for people, to be a source of joy versus a source of um, bringing people down, you know, just trying to keep a great attitude. Um, I'm sure I have a much greater purpose than that, but I'll find it. You know, I think right now, I just want to, my whole purpose is just to try to make things more joyful and mm -hmm. better for my, for my grandson, honestly. And just living life and just continue to, to live life. Um, so now that, you know, um, you've gone, you've evolved through this, this past several months or this year, um, and just having a different perspective and seeing things a little differently now, would you say, or do you believe that you're living intentionally? Yes, I do. And that is actually, uh, kind of my, my company motto is just intentional living, um, you know, to really create the most abundance in your life. And I do think, I, and I will say, I look back at my whole life. And there were times of great intention. And there were times where I had no intention at all, you know, and I was always happier when I was living intentionally. Um, so I absolutely feel like right now I'm at a point where I'm living a very intentional life. What came to mind right now, have you heard the word, the word transitory? I've heard it. Yeah. I don't know if I could use it in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Ron comes up with this deep, deep this word. Is a test, yeah. Ron, yeah. Yeah, it, it sounds like it. And, 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 it, but you already said it, you already got the answer. Um, earlier you said not one thing. Uh, I don't think people can uh, really define their purpose in life, right? Cause life is ever changing. So transitory really means not determined and life is really not determined because you really can't say you have one defined purpose. Because people redefine themselves at any age. I mean, you hear it 
you know, all the time that is when 50 years old, decide, well, I've worked for my, you know, worked at his full time career for 30 years and quit abruptly because they want to go help and be, uh, work for the church and, and help in charity. You hear it all the time. Or you hear people yeah. that they one day decided to do that. They didn't want the job anymore. They're making a million dollars a year, but they just fight. I can't do this anymore. So life is really just not just transitory. It's not determined. So just because you do one defined thing for a period of time does not mean it's going to be your destination forever. And the way to make life more pleasurable is realize we have to be malleable to everything in life. Like the situations you've been through here, the 2020, we all have been through have actually woken us up to a different life we don't want. Uh, when I lived in California, it woke me into life I do not want. I, I could not live in California and deal with the uh, the fact that being overcrowded, that no one actually communicates to you anymore unless you're part of a group or you're on social media. Um, I, I couldn't stand with the noise. Um, living in Bellingham, Washington, um, there's really no noise. Um, we don't have street lights out here, at least the community I live in. It's no street lights. So actually, when it's dark, it's pitch black dark, and I can actually look up on my porch and see the stars. And barrier wow. that did not exist. It was so much light pollution and just a overwhelm with so much trash. It was just, I, I could not believe it. But the point being is that now because of, of COVID and, and all this stuff that happened, I was able to realize what I, I really want to do something completely different. And that's why I come back to my word transitory. It's not really, your life's not really determined. Just because you do one thing does not mean you can't do something else or that you can't learn from it or you can't be better or do better. You know, like you, you went to IPAC, you're, you're taking your, your certification and all this other great stuff and you passed. Doesn't mean you may not, doesn't mean that you have to be a coach. You may be a great counselor. You may be a great consultant. You may be just a great person getting your community together for the people, but it helped you get to where you are today. It well, certainly I think opened it just up does. other stuff for you. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think when you live with intention, how do, you know, I can I ha can have some intentions towards something. And when I get there, I'm like, you know what? This isn't really what I wanted. And that doesn't mean, so I can just make a shift, you know? And I think so many people live with this fear of like making this wrong decision. So they want something, but they're afraid to commit. And I have learned if there's something I think I want, man, I go for it. And I really intentionally go for it. And if I find out it's not really the best thing for me or wasn't what I wanted, that's okay. You shift, you just go a different direction, you know, and you set an intention for something else. And a lot of people I think don't understand that they have the power to do that. Um, I see this with a lot of young people. I do a lot of career coaching and people are terrified, you know, about taking a job. And I have to remind them, nothing is for life. You can take that job. And if it doesn't work out, nobody says you have to stay there. You, you can, you know what, decide what else you want to try and make another move. I mean, that's what life's all about. And you learn from every single one of those things. And that's why we call life's a shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I didn't. I never heard that. Some people are afraid of taking a job. Yeah, yeah. It's and Ron, it's funny because I've even ha found this with my own kids. You know, when a job offer comes up, and maybe they're interviewing for a couple different jobs, and something comes up, and it's like, oh, I don't know if this is exactly what I want. Well, it might not be exactly what you want. I mean, how many of us in our twenties and thirties found the job of our lifetime? You know, that we this is exactly mm -hmm. what I want, and. I wouldn't have passed on a job. I would have taken it. And even back in those days, you took a job and you stayed there for a while. That's not the expectation anymore. So I always try to tell people there is nothing wrong with taking a job. And if you get in there and six, you, you give it a little time, you can't make that decision three months, um, give it some time. And if you find that it is absolutely not what you were looking for, you don't have to stay there forever. Make an intention to move on and figure out something else, you know, but yeah, there are people that are just afraid. And I don't know if it's afraid of letting themselves down, afraid of letting a company down by not having it work out. I'm not really sure what it is that holds people up, but yeah, there are people that just are afraid to commit because they're afraid it means forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mixture of a lot of stuff. So I, I'm talking from experience because when I had a, I had gone through a change of career from being a an independent recruiter to now being um, PE teacher and, um, and volleyball coach, it's that was a big change for me 
I was one of them that I was afraid to take this job and this opportunity because it could be that uh, we don't know if we can do the job or if we're the right person for it. For me, I wasn't sure that I could do it and that I could work with the kids and that that job was for me because, you know, in the past, I only know working in corporate. Um, I wasn't sure if I could, you know, coach volleyball. But, you know, and I agree with Jody. Give it a chance, two or three months, and see if it really is for you. But, you know, when I took these, this job and I took the opportunity and I took a chance, it, before saying yes to it, it took me months. I went back and forth talking to myself about it. Okay, I've, I've talked to other people about it. And the thing, you know, and I have seen and people tell me, well, you know, my friends, this is the right job for you. It's you. It's really you. But I have had those talks to myself. I went back and forth. Is it really me? I don't think I could do it. I don't know if I can perform well enough and, you know, for the the school or the company. So it's a lot of mixtures of things that goes in a lot of people's head, um, whether it's a good job for them or not. And it could be a really good opportunity. But it's it's all those negative that comes up for them, and the self doubt. That little would, voice, right? Yes, it's yes, that. that is, and I would say it's self doubt. A lot of it has something to do with self doubt, and so going back to that is, you know, I took the chance. I said, fine, I'll, I'll you know, I'll try this. I gave it two three months, and I fell in love with it. So those are, those are the things that you'll never really know if it really is the right one for you or not, unless you really try. Well, it's like we always ask people, like, what's the worst that can happen? And I think that's a question a lot of people don't ask themselves. They start all of a sudden just making all these things in their mind of, you know, you know, the disaster it could be. And it's like, okay, so what's the worst that really could happen? You take the job, you don't like it, you quit and you find another job. You could always have gone back to recruiting. There's a million recruiting jobs out there, you know, so what's the worst that could have happened? You didn't like it and you quit. That's about the worst that could happen. <laughs> then I go, right. No. And then I go back, I go back to, you know, uh, my, what I call my fallback. Yeah. Or you try something else. Maybe there's something else that's been, you know, interesting to you. So yeah, I think we're always very um, eager to kind of limit ourselves. And I think that's just kind of a, something in our nature, not everybody, but you know, it's, it's easier to do the things, you know, and right. it takes some risk to stick your neck out there and go, you know what? I'm going to ditch this corporate job. I'm going to go into the school system. I'm like, what a change. That would scare anybody. Mm-hmm. But if you didn't and, try it, you wouldn't know. Right, exactly. And, and you know, not everyone has that feeling of taking chances. They they don't, not everyone has a strong, um, what do you call it, willpower to to take a chance and take a step forward. And if they do, it won't come until later on. It won't come up for them till later. It's it's going to take some time. I'm glad you're doing this. So, Jody, I have a question for you. Um, now that you've had, you know, this different perspective in life after what's been going through what we call BS now this past year, <laughs> the, the, the 2020s BS. Um, now that we're reaching, BS. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're reaching the end of this year and um, which we all can't wait. I just want this year to be over too. Um, is what, is there anything that you're looking forward to in 2021? Oh, gosh, I just am looking forward to everything in 2021. I'm going to have another baby in January. I'm not having it. Obviously, my daughter is. <laughs> That's very exciting. <laughs> and even, you know, even with this pandemic, because it certainly looks like it's not going anywhere. And everything we hear, it sounds like we may be masked up for the next six months, um, maybe longer. Who knows? The thing that I look at differently now is we know what this is all about. We know what it's like. We are becoming more accustomed to it. That scares me a little bit in that we're getting way too used to it because I don't think there's anything healthy about looking at people with eyes only. You don't even know what people look like anymore. Yeah. Um, but we know what we're getting with it. So even looking at 2021, okay, pandemic's still going to be around. I think I have a little bit more open heart to it because 
I just know what we're getting into. We know what we're going into. Going into 2020, who had any idea? Every single thing every day was like, oh my God, now we have to do that. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. as you saw what happened and like the re- like what happened from the impact of the pandemic and the deaths and all that. I mean, I feel like we lived so many days in just not knowing and like fear. And I don't feel that going into 2021. So even if it's still there, I feel very um, poised to overcome all those fears and to just go with it and to continue living my life. And I think, you know, I said earlier, I just kind of put everything on hold this year. And that was my choice to do that. I don't want to do that in 2021. I want to hit the ground running in 2021 and just see what can happen. So I'm, I'm very excited to start a new year. Great. And, um, see my yeah. family grow. Yeah. So that's kind of like um, the, the title of our summit that we're having in December um, uh, this month, what we call a breakthrough without breaking you. And then you're hitting, you're hitting 2021, hit the new year with a bang. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what we're doing because the, the biggest thing is that um, some people don't have the great insight you have, Jody, or they don't have that perspective like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to make it happen. A lot of people are just really stuck. They're like, okay, I, I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. And when you get overwhelmed, you, you, your lack of your energy to do anything or do anything you change, it's non-existent. But we did the virtual summit because we feel it's vital. And for those who are going to be our guest speakers, that's vital for us to come together. It's vital for us to have, um, I would call them nuggets. So you may not get a whole different perspective change in one hour, but you may get a nugget or a seed that's planted that can manifest in something different for you. So that's why we're doing a virtual summit uh, every day up until, what's it, Christmas Eve, which is Monday. 21, 22, 23. Yep. So we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be 6 to 7 p.m. Monday. Tuesday is going to be uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then obviously 23rd, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Each, desk gonna, each day is going to have a special guest. And Gloria has been doing marvelous for the meditation, and she's going to be meditating at least two of those three days. And each day is going to be how to uh, really stress um, and how to vision 2021. Get your mind in action because, you know, to, to change or to, to create something new, the way you create something new is through action. If you want to create a new plan for yourself, it's through action. You can't sit there on your chair and be like, okay, well, I want to do this and look outside the window and hope it just drops out of the sky and lands in your lap. You got to create action. Even if it's a small inch, that inch can turn to two inches, three inches, four inches before you know you're running. And that's whole perspective time that. So we're doing our virtual summit next month, but every month, because we don't know how 2020 is going to look like, we've been doing virtual summits, our virtual um, seminars, because we got to create a collective where people can come, feel secure, feel embraced, and where they have hope. Mm-hmm. Sounds awesome. I think it sounds really exciting. Yeah. So as we get to the end of our podcast, thanks for sharing everything with us, Jody, and catching up. Uh, I'm so happy that I was able to meet in person through all three mods. Uh, I wish we had more. I have no idea how the students are, students are doing IPEC right now because I think 100% everything's virtual now. So um, I know if you're aware, too, IPEC did get brought up by another company recently, maybe three weeks ago. I don't recall the name wow. of the company, but they got, I guess, merged with our I think brought out. So I, I'm kind of curious to see how that kind of you know, manifests from there. But going into 2021, um, and I've always said this, you don't have to wait 2021 to make a change. You always make a change now. What is one thing you would say to our audience to get them empowered to make a difference in their own personal life? You know what? I think the biggest thing is trusting yourself. Um. And I think people have to learn to do that. Some people have great confidence in their their decision making and just themselves in general. And a lot of people just don't. And I think it holds you up. And whatever you have to do to be able to gain that trust in yourself, nobody knows you better than you do. So you have to trust and trust that you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. Um, so I would say that's the biggest thing for me is just listening to your own voice and trusting yourself. And Gloria, I, when you were just talking about meditating, that mm-hmm. is one thing that I need to do better. And I would, you know, for next year, it makes such a difference. And I will say that is an area that I've had a hard time getting myself really committed to. 
Mm-hmm. And I and I'm not mm-hmm. sure why, but the whole meditation is something that I really want to um, commit to in 2021. Yeah, it's it really opens up space um, and gives you, it just allows you to to be in a different world. You know, um, I honestly, um, how I got more into that was through this pandemic. This past several months, I got more into it and I educated myself even more because when I experienced it, it had an impact in me. And um, that, and I did breath work as well. You know, I was never a meditation kind of person. And I think, um, Jody, we've shared, I think you do yoga, right? Or you did yoga. I would, I actually do bar, which is kind of yoga-ish. Oh, I've quite, done bar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've done bar. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know what that is. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was, um, I didn't realize I was, um, when I was doing Bikram yoga, that it's also, you know, a part of, um, it's some type of med- meditation as well. I was doing Bikram yoga for my injuries, for stretching, right? But through this pandemic, you know, like I know a lot, just like a lot of other people, I, I was, I, I don't know. I was just, I don't know if I was lost. I just couldn't understand. I was frustrated, right? But I had to get myself and my mind out of that and snap out of that. And that's when I decided and told myself, I believe what I need to do is I need to meditate. So once I started doing that, and it did, it made a big impact in me. It really had. And that's when I have, I cannot say, I can't stress enough that um, meditation really does help a lot. With, yeah, uh, I know everybody yeah. swears by it, so I need to do it. And the main reason I don't do yoga, Glory, is because <laughs> I have a hard time doing, it, it's a little bit too mind mindful for me <laughs> that I get mm-hmm. a little bit distracted. And it's always been hard, but if I could meditate, I think I could probably love yoga, you know, just yes. get in my mind more. Uh, I know, but, um, I know, I understand exactly what you're saying because that was me. I'm the type of person when I do exercise, I have to keep moving. I can't stand still. And my mind is always wondering, so I can just lay there and just close my eyes and meditate. But um, I took a chance and, and, you know, just give it a try. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, you've uh, inspired me. You know, it was one thing to get more inspired. Um, and that's that's the great thing is that is, Gloria has inspired you to uh, get, get started. Because I was reading in this book called Jay Shetty's uh, Think Like a Monk. 95% of people can't quiet their mind past three minutes. It, it takes a really strong person to quiet the mind down. And I was going to add in there. So on um, our virtual seminar, the 21st, on Monday, we have a special guest named Ray Carmen is going to join our seminar and discuss breath work. So there may be something from there that you can learn techniques or tools to relax your mind. Because that's the, the main thing is control, listen to your breathing mm-hmm. and be able to control your thoughts, right? Because usually your, your, when your breath, breathing speeds up, your thoughts speed up, right? And, and then yeah. it creates a lot of different things. So she's hosting that because, because the, the difference is, is that if you can control your breathing, you can control your heart rate and everything slows down for you to make better uh, decisions logically, not just full of emotion. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Boy, if I could uh, keep my mind on one thing for three minutes, I'd feel like I won the lottery. <laughs> I think maybe, you know, if I can keep my mind on something for two minutes, I'm doing well. Yeah. That will be my goal is to be able to do that for three minutes. Be like the average. <laughs> and, you know, three, and you know, three minutes is a long time if you're just sitting still. It, it is. really is. It really yeah. is. Trust me. I've yeah. done it. Yeah. Yeah. It so is. Jody, it was a pleasure um, having you as a guest on Life Shuffle, Life to Shuffle podcast. Um, it was amazing catching up again, hearing your story. And I hope for 2021, you hit the ball out of the park like my, Mark McGuire, you know, back in those early 90s, hitting his home runs. Without Sammy, so, steroids. Yeah, without steroids. <laughs> just hit the ball out of the park. <laughs> of course. Uh, so for, for our guests out there, for our audience, I mean, thank you for listening to another Life Life's a Shuffle podcast. And this is Ronald Johnson, Life and Leadership Coach. And Jody, thanks for joining us again today and just sharing your story um, and Again, congratulations and good luck with the grandchildren. Um, and again, this is Gloria, your life coach. Thank you again for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.